the volume nice and loud. Because we are controlling transmissions with dance beats and R&B. You're in the mix with Lil Drummer Girl. With your host, Dawn Marie. In the mix. Hey, it's Dawn Marie here. Welcome to another episode of Little Drummer Girl. Tonight, I am backstage with Modest Mouse drummer, Jeremiah Green. He's been very pleasant to have me back here before the show and give me an interview. So without further ado, here's Jeremiah. So how you doing, Jeremiah? Doing good. Hot. <laughs> so tell me, you're originally from Hawaii. Um, no, I was born in Hawaii, oh, okay. but we left maybe when I was two or something. My dad was in the military, and yeah, he left the military around the time when I was born. Cool. We moved to Washington. Oh, so you spent most of your life in Washington State. Mm-hmm. Nice. Like eastern Washington, a place called Moxie, where they grow hops from beer and apples to eat. <laughs> and then, um, then we moved to like outside of Seattle, like uh, suburbs of Seattle, yeah. Nice. And that was cool. So you still live out there now? I live like in a, like two hours northwest of Seattle, like in this small town. It's like maybe by Victoria, Canada. Oh, wow. Close to or Port Angeles and these places that people have probably never heard of. No, it sounds beautiful, <laughs> though, because it's supposed to be really pretty out there. Yeah, it is. So how old were you the first time you began playing music? Well, I always wanted to play music from my first memory, you know what I mean? Like, we always had, like, a piano or something around the house, so I was always, like, you know, messing with that stuff, because you get bored when you're a kid, <laughs> like, and then I got into, like, punk rock, I guess, around, like, 11 or 12 or something like that. This punk rocker dude moved to our neighborhood, like, he had a mohawk and stuff. <laughs> He got in trouble, I guess, and went out in Los Angeles, and his mom sent him up. Or his dad sent him to go live with his mom, who lived in our trailer park that he lived in. And yeah, he was the, I never seen anybody like that in my life, but we skated, so he tried, we all became friends pretty quick. And then we knew about some of that stuff from Thrasher Magazine and whatnot, you know what I mean? So, but he made me like a tape of like The Cure and Sex Pistols and Dead Kennedys, and I think that was it. And I just went from there and he gave us a list of tapes and shit we should buy, and we bought them all for Christmas or whatever. And, made me want to play music just because I was kind of like, you know, like I felt like I could do that. So you started with your first instrument was the piano and then when did you make I didn't know it wasn't my instrument. Oh, okay. I just beat on it. <laughs> <laughs> like I was playing drums on it. Yeah, I just didn't beat on it because it made noise. Cool. But, so how old were you really when you started getting on the set? Playing? Oh, like 13 maybe. Oh. But then I stopped for a year or something and then I started playing again like 14, I guess. I was in eighth grade. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that's about right. Junior high. Very cool. Was there a certain drummer that you really wanted to emulate? Yeah, like Brendan Canty for Fugazi. Fugazi? Yeah, his drums for Fugazi. And he's like, yeah, my number one drummer. <laughs> Dude from Can later, but I didn't really get into Can until I was like 15, 16 or something. You know, Can, I can't remember his German name when I can't find out. He's like one of the best fucking drummers in the world, I think. And do you remember the first song you had to learn how to play? Um, my brother taught me the beat. Yeah. I didn't know what it was from, but it was it was actually like a YouTube beat. I guess I learned, you know. <laughs> He taught me it. He was better. What's your favorite drum kit? What? My favorite drum kit? Well, CNC drum in Kansas. Yeah, they're friends. They make the best drums around these days, I think. Like, I'm more close to, like, old drums. And who's your favorite symbol? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, Agop. There's two Istanbul. Istanbul A. Hey. Agop. A-G-O-B. I'm not familiar with them. I'll have to check that out. They're cool. I think they're the best symbols. They're handmade in Turkey. Oh, really? Yeah, like a lot of things. Very cool. Really? Really long time. More people are getting into handmade in Turkey now. Nice. So you have a custom kit? Yeah. yeah. DNC usually does custom kits. Like, that's what they did forever. I think they have, like, more, like, kits that they send out to shops and stuff, you know, that are more standardized, but still kind of custom. I've known them for quite a while now. Awesome. Like, everybody's kind of playing their stuff these days, too, you know? How did you come up with the name Modest Maps? I didn't come up with it. Okay. <laughs> um, I think our singer. Do you know what, what inspired him to, to come up with that name? Well, I don't exactly know, but I know that it's been quoted in, like, from a Virginia 
you can play on a turntable yeah wow. it's only three minutes that's cool yeah. i still use my turntable I, I love my vinyl so i won't give that yeah, up ever yeah. what would you say your favorite book is i, I like the tao to ching it's not really a book but is that read, poetry read that kind of okay it's like an old chinese book yeah. tao to ching. and proverbs and kind of like yeah that. awesome and what would you say is your favorite genre of music uh electronic <laughs> <laughs> like daft punk i love i love uh, yeah, the first soundtrack was amazing. Yeah, it was cool. I mean, I like that. They're great. Yeah, I, like, I like a lot of Apex, but I can't remember all the names. <laughs> How many days a week do you practice? I practice, like, for about 10 minutes a day, 10 to 15 minutes. Wow. Sometimes I'll sit down for, like, an hour, but I'm usually just playing along with other Very music, cool. you know what I mean? Like, in the early days when I was in school and stuff, <laughs> with Modest Mouse, like, we would practice once a week, twice a week, but I didn't have a place to play. So, you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't play in the apartment or whatever, so... Yeah, I would just play only practice for like two hours a week, maybe. Yeah. Wow, okay. And that's it. Yeah, I didn't really practice. That's yeah. amazing. I mean, because I know I... Shit. It takes a while for me to get a song down. Oh, and when I you would tour. think about drumming a lot, though. Like, all that time that I couldn't play the drums, I would just be uh, thinking about it so hard. But when I finally got to the drums and had them set up, you know, like, I feel like I got a lot out, you know, out of my few hours. You visualized your playing. So, yeah. yeah, and that's, like, what a lot of athletes do. They visualize themselves, you know, getting to whatever it is they do to, to be the best that they can be. And listening to music and going to shows, too, like, helped a lot Absolutely. to learn how to play, like, seeing people do. So Absolutely. Like song, which you see, you're like, okay, that makes sense now. Like, right. That is fun. To struggle to do this. <laughs> do you teach music at all? No. No. I tried to teach this eight-year-old kid Saul once, and um, he just wanted to play Grand Theft Auto, and which was I probably shouldn't have let him play Grand Theft Auto, but he <laughs> said he knew all about it and it was cool, and his dad said it was cool, and he would just not play drums, <laughs> and he just be at my house for hours. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> Hoping that he would just go be on the drum. Dad lived across the street, so it wasn't like... You did a favor for your neighbor. That's that's pretty cool. Do you ever get nervous before going on stage? Yeah. You do? Yeah. What do you do to calm the jitters? I don't know, actually. Like, I mean, I try to just, like, stay calm for, like, a half hour and, like, not look at my phone or, like, you know. But I don't know what I do. I stretch a little bit. I take some herbs uh-huh. <laughs> and whatnot. That's all good. To try to chill for at least 30 minutes before we go Before out. you go out there? I need to chill for, like... 10, 20 minutes after to just like not, you know what I mean, not talk to people or like think about 
Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of energy you have. And then you're up there playing for... No meditation, same idea. Exactly. And even if you're just like breathing and just relaxing, it's a beautiful thing. Um, did you ever have an embarrassing moment on stage when you were playing? I'm sure I have. I can't remember <laughs> that. I mean, like, I don't know if people would notice necessarily. I have a friend who actually had diarrhea and he pooped his pants on stage oh, somewhere. That didn't that that's happen not to me. That would be lame. Um, I'd like, <laughs> that would just be like fun. snot coming out of my face and I'd be <laughs> wiping off because I'm playing drums. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a really strenuous. And sometimes when we play during the day, I feel pretty self conscious. Like I'm just like you know sweating. Like yesterday, Miami was pretty hot and it was light out, and they're just like I am. I look like shit right now. I really don't want to. Lose. Stuff that's going on. People are looking at us. That's our job is to stand up. But yeah. When you're not working on stage and touring, what do you like to do with your time? Do you have any hobbies? Anything um, you like to do? Any yeah, I like, I like to just like do nothing a lot, to be honest. Like, not nothing, but I like to be where, at home. When I'm not on tour, I like to be at home. Cool. You know, and like needy. And, you <laughs> just know, doing like that good old... Days, you know, and, yeah. you know, hang out with my cats. And cool, what kind of cats do you have? And stuff, having a baby. So oh, congratulations. Girl. Is it your first? Wow, that's awesome. You excited? Yeah. When does she do? End of September. Oh, it's right around the corner. Very cool. Do you know if it's a boy or a girl? Yeah, Which one? a boy. Woo! <laughs> nice. Congratulations. Thanks. That's really cool. Nice draw. Oh, you do? Okay. I take photos, but it's not like I'm super serious. No, but that's the fun part because it is a hobby so you don't have to stress over it and it doesn't have to be perfect and I tell a lot of people that when I'm coaching people I say find even when you work a full-time job and it's you know nine to five or whatever it is and I just say you have to find your little creative outlet you know even if it's just like you say you just like to photograph things you know go for a walk take pictures of nature whatever it is try to find bliss because sometimes you know the stress of the day to day you know where you thin and you know and then you get burnout out and so uh, it's nice, but when you have a tour going on now, how long is the tour going to happen? Um, it's till the 31st, I believe. Of July? July? Yeah. Okay. I believe so. And how long have you been touring oh, already? This is our ninth show. Oh, um, wow. I'm not good with this stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we left like the end of June, you know, like the last June 27th, maybe. Okay. We got like 20 something days left, right? Where are you up to after tonight? Tonight? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly just go on tour. I'm like, I know when my the plane is leaving to go. Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta. Nashville, Columbia. We're not playing in Nashville. And then Maryland, and New York, Philadelphia, Nashville. Oh, wow. Tulsa, Sounds like a nice tour. Texas. Two shows in Texas. Air, two shows. No, no. Arizona and a bunch of shows in California. <laughs> wow. Inglewood. New Jersey? Oh, well, there's an Inglewood, New Jersey. Inglewood, California. <laughs> okay. That's my viewer. Dr. Dre might be from. Oh, yes, Dr. Inglewood. Dre. I helped give him licenses on samples way back when in the 90s. Doesn't he do his own? Like, he doesn't, he, like, takes the, he redoes the sample, right? He would take the like song, like he would make his original song and then use like the bass line off of an original oh, music, okay. music song composition and then create his own little thing. But uh, yeah, he, he was one of, the, one of the first ones out there doing that. He is. He really is. So if you ever make a mistake during a performance, how do you handle it and how do you pull yourself out of that? <laughs> <laughs> make a bunch of noise really quick and stop really quick. And just like, you know what I mean? Or I'll just like do some, I don't know. I really don't know how to explain that, but yeah, it happens. It, it happens, just, okay. It's like, <laughs> I've gotten better at it. You know what I cool. mean? Well, you guys have been together like, was it 22 years? Yeah, like we all know if something is off pretty quick and we can, like sometimes we just like, sometimes we just stop really quick and it's like hopefully not that noticed. But usually the audience <laughs> will never know. You guys will know, but no one else will I know. I can like hit some symbols really loud or something. <laughs> What's your favorite curse word? My favorite curse word? Mm -hmm. Oh, they're all bad words. I don't know. <laughs> I wish I didn't curse. Do you have them. a favorite? Ah, pretty good one. Ah, donkey, ass, turkey. That's a real <laughs> turkey. Are you a jive turkey? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was a it's good even worse. Uh, Um. Son of a goat, horror. 
I like that. Um, I never heard that. What is that? How do you say that? Mamma mia, la puta, or something like putana. that. Putana. Is that how you the say putana. Whore? Son of a goat. Whore. Well, a putana is a whore in Italian. Oh, okay. That's all I know. <laughs> Cabron? Doesn't that mean, like, oh, maybe that's the son of a goat whore. I can't remember. I can't remember. But I like that. Do you uh, prefer cars or motorcycles? Cars, safe cars. And motorcycles, though. Nothing against them, but they are dangerous. They are dangerous. They can be. Um, do you have any words of wisdom to future artists looking to get into the business out there now? Um, I guess it should be real. I like, don't like, try to be something you aren't. Like, still like, figure out what it is you like and like what you are and do that. You know what I mean? Don't pay attention to the world so much, you know? Who cares what the world is about you? Like, right. You gotta do your own thing, you know? People think it's stupid. Like, I know when I started playing music, I don't think people liked it all what we were doing, you know what I mean? Like, I remember people leaving the fucking room, like, the whole, like... No way. Like, you know, but I was like, whatever, you guys, I don't like what you guys are doing, because it's exactly like what other people are doing, and I don't necessarily want to see that, you know what I mean? I don't want to see you, but you know what I mean? I don't care, yeah, I guess just think for yourself. Now that's very important, to be true to yourself, I think, and no matter what you do in life, you have to be true to yourself. You don't have to be like a fucking perfect musician, you know what I mean? You just have to get whatever it is you feel like you want to get across, you know? You just gotta get that across. Like, don't worry about being Guitar Center's best drummer of the, of the 2016. Mm -hmm. I mean, personally, I don't like the way that sounds at all, but <laughs> it sounds bad. You know what I mean? Like, just some guy, like, just solely. He's the stuff, perfect. And, like, it's like, ugh. Right. Like, why judge? It's very judgy. Yeah, you shouldn't. Music isn't. Yeah, music is a lot of a lot of people, so it's kind of like pointless to judge it. You know what I mean? Because other people don't That's really true. care. Like if you come in a room and say some song is stupid or something like that, that somebody's <laughs> listening to, like they don't give a. F I mean, you know what I mean? They're like, yeah. you might make them not like that song, or would it? Just, like, <laughs> we don't like this. Knowing what you know now, would you do it all over again, or would you change anything? No, I mean, I don't know. Actually, I really don't know. But, I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of things I would change if I could change stuff, you know, just stuff. I don't think about that. <laughs> All right. Well, Jeremiah, thank you so much for taking time out tonight. I mean, I know you have a show coming up, so I want to let you get to the things you need to do, and I don't want to hold you up, but thank you so much for being here tonight. And thank you. I wish you great luck with the show, and I can't wait to hear it. Cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Well, thank you for joining us again. If you like this episode, please share it with your friends and subscribe. We're also on Stitcher Radio and SoundCloud. And don't forget to check out the footage from the show at my YouTube channel at Little Drummer Girl. That's L-I-L Drummer Girl. I will attach the link to the show notes. Live the life of your dreams and leave a trailblazing behind you. Until the next time, I'll catch you on the flip side. Namaste.